Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome again to this session within the, the climate strand of our Clean Med conference. Uh, my name is Scott Brady. I am the Climate Programme Manager with Healthcare Without Harm in Europe, uh, and I'll be moderating for this session. Uh, just before we get properly started, um, so thank you to everybody that, that, that's that been a part of our first ever uh, virtual Clean Med Europe conference. And um, while we obviously miss connecting with you all in person, as we'd originally hoped to in Brussels, um, we are very delighted to be able to offer this, this platform and, and see so many people turning up. Um, so as you know, because of the many challenges and uncertainty caused by the ongoing pandemic, uh, we've waived all of the conference fees for this year. So in lieu of a conference fee, uh, we are asking attendees and or your organisations to consider making a donation to Healthcare Without Harm Europe using the link that will be going into the, the chat box momentarily. Um, you'll also find that link on the conference app and on our Clean Med Europe website. Uh, we are a non-profit organisation and we do rely quite heavily on the generosity of funders uh, to carry out our mission to essentially transform the healthcare sector worldwide into a more sustainable system. So if, if you are able, uh, we'd be very grateful uh, for any donations that, that you might consider. So to start the session, we are in the session for how nurses can take climate action and presenting the Nurses Climate Challenge. So this is the fourth session under the climate theme for the, uh, for the Clean Med Europe Conference. Uh, and essentially this session is to, to tell everybody that the Nurses Climate Challenge is coming to Europe. So this is a scheme that was launched or an initiative that was launched in the US back in 2018. And it essentially aims to mobilize nurses to educate their colleagues on the impacts of climate change on human health. So through the challenge, nurses are provided with access to various resources, and it aims to build a network and launch a movement of informed and more engaged health professionals that are committed to climate solutions. Since its launch in the US, the challenge has seen over 16,000 nurses educated, and Healthcare Without Harm Europe now aims to replicate that success here in Europe to create a, a truly global movement among the nursing community. So we have um, three talks, if you like, uh, to, to, to get us rolling. Uh, so we have uh, Shama, uh, Shanda Demarest, who's our member engagement manager with Practice Green Health in the US. So she's firstly going to introduce us to the climate challenge and outline how it's been developed and how it's grown over the years and highlight some of those major successes that it's had. Um, she will then be followed up by Maria Kassar uh, and Flora Cubello who are essentially going to give us a bit of more of a European perspective on it. So they are current participants of the challenge within Europe, um, and they're going to outsign, outline some of the work that they've been doing with their colleagues. Now, there will be a Q&A at the end of the session, so please do drop your questions into Whova's Q&A facility. Um, just to highlight to use the Whova platform rather than putting your questions into the, the Zoom facility. Um, and please do direct your questions to the relevant speaker if that is appropriate or if that's uh, required. Um, and also, please feel free to use Whova's chat function for more general discussions and networking. It's, it's proved hugely successful so far, um, so it would be great to see that continue. So, I guess without kind of further ado, I'll introduce our, uh, our, our first speaker. Uh, so, first up is Shanda Demarest. And she is a registered nurse, and she is also our member engagement manager with Practice Green Health, um, where she works with hospitals and health systems to reduce their environmental impact. Um, so for those that don't know, Practice Green Health is part of the Healthcare Without Harm family. Um, Shanda has earned her Doctorate of Nursing Practice uh, in Health Innovation and Leadership from the University of Minnesota, and she holds uh, the Lead Green Associate Credential through the US Green Building Council. Um, she is a cardiovascular nurse by trade, I guess, with a horticultural training uh, also included in her background. And she currently leads the Nurses Climate Challenge at Healthcare Without Harm in the US, uh, which is, as I've mentioned, it's a national campaign to, to 
educate health professionals about the health impacts of climate change. Um, so with that, nobody really wants to hear me speaking too much. So I'm going to hand it over to Shanda and she will give your introduction to the Nurses Climate Challenge. Shanda, you should be able to share your screen now. Terrific. Thank you, Scott. Let me know if you have eyes on what I've pulled up here. Yeah, we're good. Wonderful. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to the folks on the other side of the pond. Um, I'm calling in today from San Francisco in the United States, and I'm delighted to be on the line with you today and to be accompanied by um, my close allies, Floro and Maria. So again, thank you for the invitation. And the next um, little bit here, I'll be eager to talk about um, the history of the Nurses Climate Challenge in the United States, some of the momentum that we've gained together, some of our successes, and um, then serve that as a launch pad for Floro and Maria to uh, take the next step. So basically here's what we'll talk about today and specifically Maria and Flora will come in with um, their experiences from Malta and Finland respectively. So in thinking about the Nurses Climate Challenge in the United States, this, this is actually, a, I think it's an interesting story, of course, I'm, I'm biased, but way before I even joined Practice Green Health and Healthcare Without Harms family, so to speak. I, I was working as a staff nurse in Minnesota. I was simultaneously working as an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota there. And as many faculty have, there was a portion of my, um, of my job that I had to devote towards scholarship. And my graduate degrees and my personal passion were all around climate and sustainability. And I was very eager to bring that into nursing education more deliberately. Healthcare Without Harm had a physician network and still does have a very robust physician network. Um, but I saw an opportunity for nurses to be brought in. And so from my position, um, sort of from an external org at the time, I reached out to Healthcare Without Harm and, and simultaneously an organization um, in the US here called Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments, which also has a little bit of a global spin for their climate work. And I said, let's bring nurses up to speed. How can we do this? So we embarked upon basically a long brainstorming session and um, basically came down to the conclusion that, well, nurses don't really seem to be taking major action around climate. Why is that? And a little bit of a root cause analysis showed us that, well, maybe nurses don't necessarily care about climate from a human health perspective. And maybe that's because they're not quite sure what climate means for human health. And so we developed basically this, this concept of helping nurses understand what climate change is from a basic scientific level, understand how it impacts human health so that they are able to directly connect it to their practice. And as we know, nursing practice is so varied that um, using human health as the central pillar is, is a win-win, hopefully. And then by understanding and caring about climate in relation to nursing um, practice, essentially, they can be moved to take action. And so what this led to, um, initially we had little baby steps where we said, well, maybe we can have 5,000 nurses or health professionals educated. And we um, built some materials and some resources and I'll, I'll share more about what that looks like later. Um, but our whole intent was to develop a cohort, reach as many nurses and health professionals as possible. And you'll notice that I've included this, this also all the other health professionals too. The hope behind the Nurses Climate Challenge is that it's led by nurses who are learning about climate content and educating their peers, not only their nursing peers, but also their other health professional peers. So docs and physical therapists and dentists, et cetera. Um, and our aim was really to launch, at the time, a national movement, uh, which has grown significant momentum over the last couple of years. 
So I mentioned that we developed resources and I'll give you a, a quick snapshot of what some of these look like. In essence, we built a web platform um, and where nurses could register to become nurse climate champions for free. Just do a little online form. Um, and once nurses gained access to the web platform, they had a whole host of resources to learn about climate and educate others. So what I've included here is just a quick snip of the, really the single slide that we include about climate science. And we, we used the World Health Organization, the US Centers for Disease Control, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Lancet Commission, the American Public Health Association, um, the National Climate Assessment, I mean, you name it, we were looking to the highest level of authority um, and expertise when we pulled our content together. And in doing so, we learned um, via an org called Eco America, we, we read a lot about how to communicate about climate change. And we learned that a lot of people do understand the general basics, but want to learn more about personal applicability applicability to their profession and then the action component. And so that's why we, you know, didn't dig down into the very depths of um, the specifics of climate science um, and just did a, a baseline overview. Here's another example of um, some of the content that we shared within our bread and butter resources. It's basically a PowerPoint um, format that nurses are using to do their education. And we include a hospital here with all sorts of ways that um, healthcare traditionally contributes to climate change. And so we have talking points in the notes sections where nurses are learning about, oh, well, in my hospital, maybe we have um, you know, a, a very high amount of surgeries and we're using a lot of anesthetic gases, which happen to have very high global warming potentials in comparison to carbon dioxide. Or maybe, for instance, hospitals are um, purchasing a lot of meat for their patients and for their staff. In the U.S., not that unusual at all. So helping nurses to understand what that footprint can look like more specifically within their workplace. We talked about um, some of the primary sort of overarching health impacts. And this is an image from the American Public Health Association. And I wanted to share this today because we bring up vectors um, and changes in ecology and how that contributes to um, changes in rates of West Nile, malaria, dengue, Zika, and Lyme disease here in the United States, um, which, is, which is really prevalent. I'm not sure how it you know, is with the different latitudes in Europe. Um, but we also in 2020 went through a process of um, updating all of our resources and for this, ecological and, and zoological angle, we included um, the, how the United Nations has identified that zoonotic diseases and essentially potential for pandemics will become more prevalent in the future um, due to climate change specifically. And so we, we try to make this relevant to current practice and knowing, again, it, you know, in the context of COVID-19, that's really what's at the front of most nurses' minds at this point. And then one other image that I'd like to share of resources that we included, um, and this, this really came in response to um, the police brutality in the United States and the challenges that came after George Floyd was murdered in Minnesota, actually in my hometown. Um, and so we more deliberately included content about how climate change and environmental justice issues um, are, are very closely connected disproportionately affecting vulnerable populations in particular. And we had several resources as well for nurses to learn more about how climate change connects with social equity, racial equity, and justice. So here's just a very high level, take a, you know, a glance at all of our resources. We have 24 that nurses are able to dig into, learn about climate and, and talk with others. And so these are really the resources that we're collaborating with Healthcare Without Harm Europe to amend and make much more applicable to a European audience. So stay tuned, there'll be many, many for you to work from. 
And what has made this so successful? Of course, we've had bumps along the way in terms of engagement, um, but we've been really, really pleased with how much momentum this has, has grown. So a few ways that we do that, um, you'll notice Floro Cubello here in the upper left, he was highlighted as one of our quarterly nurse climate champions. And we've been doing these profiles throughout the duration of our program. So basically um, every quarter we look to see who's been one of the most active on our site, who's been reporting, educating their colleagues and their peers, and we interview them to learn more about their stories. And so the idea behind this is to bring a human face um, to these nurse climate champions to, to really encourage others to be doing this work and think about how it can be applicable in whatever their nursing practice is. We also have active social media, um, and I would encourage you to check us out at RN Climate Chow on Twitter, um, and then of course, Healthcare Without Harm, US and Canada, and, and the global version Europe as well, has, um, has handles on, on multiple social media accounts. But this um, basically gives us a platform to reach folks beyond the countries of Europe, beyond the countries, you know, in North America. And we've gained quite a bit of success um, in South America as well with this, with this tactic. And so we're excited that we're expanding our family. We also have a school of nursing commitment. And this is just a seed to plant for the future um, in that we're partnering with nursing schools officially so that they are integrating this content into um, into their curricula. And basically faculty are able to pull these resources and teach their nursing students with um, PowerPoint presentations, resources on policy advocacy or writing letters to the editor or taking action within um, community and, and nursing unit practice essentially. And all of those resources are ready to go for faculty. So it's really lovely from that angle. Um, because then nursing students are able to understand the health impacts of climate before they're even out in the field. And just to give a brief update of our numbers, um, you heard Scott do a mention at the beginning of this. Um, oh goodness, I have an extra comma down here. So we have over um, 1,400 nurse climate champions across the planet now, and you'll see that they are heavily um, outweighed in the United States, of course, but basically we're, we're on six continents. We have about 13% of these nurses who register for the site who are outside of the US. So that has shown us we really need to be more deliberate in developing content that's applicable to other geographies outside of North America. And so that leads to the Nurses Climate Challenge Europe. And you'll see here a few maps that I've zoomed in on. And, and basically we are able to see um, all across the planet where these nurse climate champions are. And that also um, gives us the opportunity to serve as a network. So we can connect all of the nurses in Europe doing this work. Um, there are a couple dozen already. And um, it also serves as a terrific opportunity for um, sustainability leaders within hospitals to learn whether there are nurses in their facilities specifically already working on sustainability and climate action. Because oftentimes um, sustainability leaders in hospitals are deliberately seeking a clinical champion to help carry this message of the public health impacts of climate. And two more resources that I wanna share with you before I hand this off to my colleague. Um, these global opportunities, Nurses Drawdown and the Climate Health and Nursing Tool are both nursing specific opportunities basically to, um, in the case of Nurses Drawdown, learn more in conjunction with Project Drawdown, which is a, a global initiative to basically draw down or pull carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, and this one is specifically tailored towards nurses. And it was um, developed by multiple members on the Nurses Climate Challenge team. But we narrow down to areas where nurses can take action on climate specifically to, related to energy, food, nature, mobility, and gender equity. And the link is there. And then the, the climate and climate health and nursing tool is um, a psychometric 
adequately evaluated, developed tool to analyze nurses um, and other health professionals' knowledge, behaviors, motivation, and action related to climate change. And that's available in English and Spanish, soon to be translated to Portuguese as well. Um, and so that's a terrific tool for people within the education space. So I've included the email for the Nurses Climate Challenge US down here, um, you know, just for contact purposes, but this would not be possible without our terrific team um, working very hard to pull this all together. And I'm so delighted um, that Healthcare Without Harm Europe is, is ready to launch this in, um, in Europe. And we very much look forward to continuing that partnership together. So thank you. I'll stay on the line for Q&A um, and I will stop my share and Maria, hand it over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Shanda. <clears throat> and just before uh, Maria shares her screen there, um, I, will, uh, I will very quickly share my screen. Sorry, Maria, I've kicked you off there. Um, and just to int introduce Maria uh, in a bit more detail. Um, so thank you very much, Shanda. That was a really interesting presentation and really great to see the, the success uh, the, 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 that's in the US. Um, as Shanda mentioned, we are looking to launch this in Europe. I am going to come back to that in a bit more detail towards the end of the session. Um, so do please stay tuned for, for some more details around that. Um, but I think now what would be useful is just to get a bit of a European uh, perspective uh, on this as well. So as, as Shanda mentioned, we do have European participants currently in the US version of the, uh, the, the Nurses Climate Challenge. Uh, and we've got Maria and Floro uh, who are going to, to, to give us that, that European perspective. So Maria Casara, first of all, uh, is a registered nurse and she's a senior lecturer at the University of Malta. Uh, following her pre-registration nurse education in Malta, uh, she pursued postgraduate studies at King's College in London uh, and at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland uh, and the University of Illinois in the US uh, and an intern period at Luther College and the Mayo Clinic in the US as well. Uh, her academic commitments and research interests include internationalisation in higher education and health policy and the use of technology and simulation in teaching and learning. Her work experience spans the UK, Italy, India, US, Angola, and Russia. Uh, and she was policy coordinator for the Ministry of Health, Government of Malta between 2010 and 2013. She's currently vice president of FINE, uh, and she has participated in several international projects and maintains a keen voluntary commitment across initiatives which address climate change uh, and nurse refugees as well. Uh, so, Maria, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, do you want to share your screen? I will. Great. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess the introduction was as detailed as could be. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm really delighted to be here for two reasons. One, it's an opportunity to share our experience with the nurse climate health um, with the Cl nurse climate challenge but also it's an opportunity for um, europe to join this um, i would say mission that uh, has been has been started through this initiative i'm trying to change my screen okay there it is Okay, so where did we start from? I'll, uh, I'll start, go back one slide. I chose this image from 2019, somebody kind of jumping from one year to the other, from 2019, 2020. And there's a reason why I've selected that slide, that image. It really captures what the Department of Nursing, which is the department that I lead in the University of Malta, were trying to do when we adopted the climate, the nurses climate challenge we were we were at the time looking for something for an activity for an opportunity which would bridge the 2019 international nurses day celebrations with that of the consequent year of the subsequent year that is 2020 
we were the nursing department, the Department of Nursing was at the time thinking very hard, trying to find a way um, for celebrating the International Nurses Day, which is the 12th of May, in an original way, but and in a meaningful way. And meaningful, we were wanting to find some a topic, we wanted to focus on our celebrations around something which was relevant, which was topical, which was that is um, relevant, uh, you know, in, relevant to the moment, but also important. In previous years, we looked at other issues such as poverty and, uh, and the social aspect of care. So we always, as a department, we always try to focus on something which is relevant, topical and important for nursing. And it was very clearly written on the wall this time uh, in 2019 that the focus should be climate change. We were experiencing it and hearing about it and being inundated with information about climate change and the impact on, and the impact on health. However, uh, we were, as nurses, wanting to be engaged in this uh, phenomenon, but lost as to how to do it, how to go about addressing it. So we were looking for um, help to take us through celebrating the International Nurses Day of 2019 in a meaningful way. We were wanting something that would not cost us money, which would in fact be cost effective and save money. We wanted to do something which was, uh, which we, we were ready to buy off somewhere else, somebody else or some other entity or some other organization, but at a cheap pace and a cheap price because we our resources are limited because um, we were operating from the University of Malta, which is a public funded university in a tiny island in the Mediterranean. So our resources are very limited and we needed we want we needed a starting point and a goal to to aim at, because unless we could identify um, the end point of our journey, then how can we celebrate at the end of the and at the end of the year, we always looked. We always look for opportunities that take us from one year, one International Nurses Day to the next. So we needed something. Um, we needed a goal. We needed a landmark, and this is where we came across the nurse, the Nurses Climate Challenge. How did we come across it? We, I basically um, drawing upon our our nature as Mediterraneans. We're very passionate about what we do so we searched the net we searched everywhere we could for for opportunities to help us to guide us to provide us with a platform to equip our nurses to go for this um, topic of climate change and find a way of addressing it in a effective passionate um, committed manner which we are renowned to to uh, to um, to do to go about our lives as Mediterraneans. So the, however, we at the when we came across the Nurses Climate Challenge um, opportunity, we realized that it's very uh, North America based at the time because this was way back in end of 2018. So we wrote to um, the organizers there, the leaders there, and we asked whether we could participate in this challenge despite being in Europe and to our great delight we were invited we were welcomed welcomed on board and we decided to join this challenge uh, as from as a tiny unit from tiny Malta from far away in the Mediterranean so we set off with an ambitious with, uh, with an ambitious goal of trying to sensitize 5,000 healthcare workers in Malta, sensitize, raise awareness, share ideas, support, mot motivate, educate, and empower 5,000 healthcare workers in Malta within a period of one year. That is from, 2000, from the 12th of May, 2019, right up to the 12th of May, that is Nurses International Nurses Day, 
of 2020. That was our goal, and, and that is where we started from, wanting to sensitize, raise awareness, support, motivate, educate, and empower, which are which sound like very basic, um, very, very humble ambitious, uh, humble as regards the ambition, the ambition of the level of ambition of our project. And, um, but indeed it was not, because when we talk about 5,000 healthcare workers in the context of our country, it's a lot of people in view of the fact that the total population of the country is indeed less than half a million. So we were really um, aiming high as regards the numbers we wanted to reach out to. How did we manage that? How did we go about it? And how did we, in fact, in, in the end of managing? What saved the day was, and saved our, uh, our project, was uh, the, where the fantastic resources offered by, provided by the platform of the Nurses Climate Challenge. My, my colleague here, Shanda, has referred to the PowerPoint and the resources that are available. And indeed, they are wonderful. Our and my personal worry or concern was that we're going to be using um, resources which were developed and, and are being used in North America amongst healthcare workers in the tiny island in the Mediterranean called Malta. And I was wondering whether the, well, I was concerned personally, we were concerned as a department about the applicability and the relevance of the, of the resources, but I can share with you our experience and, and confess with you that we had no challenges in that regard, we had no problems in that regard, the applicability and the relevance were very, um, were, were thorough, where we were very satisfied with the resources we had to, we were, we, we, we were, which were made available once we registered as uh, members of this challenge, the Nurses Climate Challenge. We, as I said, we were we were very passionate about our ambitious project, about our ambitious idea. But we, the resources were 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 low, and we wanted to keep costs low as much as possible. And I'm here to share my experience, our experience, and and I can again confess with you that the costs incurred were negligible, beyond the human resources at us that we nurse educators committed to because we used extensively the resources available, made available once we became members of the climate challenge and we didn't need to develop any other resources or tweak the resources or adjust them in any way. So in essence, it, the costs were um, negligible beyond our, our time and energy. Which is the which is to, to credit to which is a credit to uh, and we owe it we owe the success to the organizers of the nurses climate challenge um, for the wonderful resources they have they they provided us members with so what did we do we 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 familiarized ourselves extensively with the platform with all resources of the platform on the platform and we shared them we reached out to all our stakeholders this is one of this is a picture taken of that's myself um, sharing with the stakeholders those are the people the important people so to say from the ministry and the, the regulatory bodies and the countries where we're with which nurses in Malta's Malta engage so we organized many many uh, opportunities for sharing the resources which were made available to us by the Nurse Climate Challenge, and we shared them with all in a very, um, in as an informal a manner as could be, and very much in a in, in a very in a very I would say collegial manner, whereby um, we it was about it was obviously it wasn't us talking down to anybody, but it's us wanting to share this wonderful um, opportunity to educate oneself which we have been privileged to meet through the Nursing Climate Challenge. So it's, the approach was very much, let's, we found this wonderful resources, can we share them with you? And through sharing them with all our partners, our stakeholders, I would like to think that we 
managed to um, educate, empower, sensitize all the lists that we were wanting, we were hoping to achieve. Who are you? Maybe just to clarify, who are the stakeholders? The stakeholders who I'm, whom I'm saying we we reached out to, we actively reached out to. We didn't expect anybody to come. We actually went, I mean, virtually or physical or actual or physically. Uh, so we reached out to all the. We run nurse education entities. So and obviously our students practice across various hospitals and and practice areas. So we reached out to all the placement, the practice areas where our students um, go, which is, and that's several, and that's basically, so we reached out to all the practice areas and um, health clinics and, and service providers of Malta. We also reached out to similar, all the education entities offering healthcare programs not only nursing programs, but the medical schools, the, the schools for the caring, the, the, the caring staff and the health assistance staff. So we reached out to all education entities. But, and so that we, so we spanned all our shores um, from one end of the country to the other in this regard. However, we, we went a step further when we were gauging and getting very positive vibes with our, with our um, successful um, outreach and we extended our efforts to our European partners we operate and we 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 work very closely with a number over 30 uh, European universities whereby we exchange students and staff we have bilateral agreements with with around 30 European universities and we shared and reached out to these universities as well as active partners within our with our department so really, we have um, stepped beyond the shores of Malta in our initiative, and that explains why we managed to hit the three, the five thousand, um, the the, um, the five thousand number which we were aiming for, which we're very proud to have done. So by May two thousand and twenty, we were not thinking anymore, but we were celebrating. We we're celebrating that we managed to we set off on this uh, very passionately. And very enthusiastically, we set off um, to, we wanted to, we set off on addressing something we really wanted to address. We, we were really feeling and thinking needed to be addressed, and that is climate and climate change. And we had managed because we were keeping track of the number and we had managed to do so. Well, by the time, it, by a year on, we were just about over the one, the estimated one, 5,000 um, target point we were aiming for. Our, our sleeves remain rolled up. What I mean, what I meant to say, what I mean by that is that yes, International Day of 2020 in 12th of May has passed and we're, I don't know, six, seven months down the line now, but we are still working. How are we doing so? Um, we are still working by seeking to follow up. And this is maybe, you know what? I've, what maybe my parting point for for this presentation for sharing our experience here. What are the lessons learned, and how are we? What are we doing? You know, given that the lessons are learned. One is that we are continuing to talk to our stakeholders because we all know that unless a message is repeated, it's very often forgotten. So we are returning slowly. You know, recontacting all our stakeholders with the same message beyond the beyond our target we are however very careful and making sure we don't overkill and we don't bore people as in not remain trying to remain topical and and relevant because um two years down the line we know when we set off in 2018 with the idea of addressing climate change it was quite novel and quite exciting and quite new to Two, three, two, three years down the line, it might be becoming, um, it, you know, people might be getting a bit fatigued, tired of it. So we are, we are being very careful about that. Um, what we are also trying to do is um, addressing a consequence and an, an unexpected consequence of our outreach, and that is, is stakeholders are coming back to us and telling us. Okay, you came and you know motivated all our workforce. Now, can you help us deal with this motivation? And that is a consequence, perhaps we were not, we were naively not prepared for, 
So we are trying to build ways and avenues and opportunities of how to support the stakeholders, because we went there, we, we uh, um, maybe planted a seed and now the, the trees are growing and they're asking for help with, um, you know, keeping the, the trees in place and, and taking care of them. And perhaps we naively we have not thought about equipping ourselves with resources to do so. But that's why it's so wonderful to be part of this big community in the climate, being a member of the Clean Nurses Climate Change, because we uh, we we have where to turn for for support, and um, some are, the stakeholders. Some of them are wanting to develop clinical champions and wanting help with educating the clinical champions. So we are keeping our sleeves rolled up in that manner by supporting them accordingly. And one last thing, and this is possibly, if I may um, humbly uh, share a piece, of, a piece of advice to anybody who after hearing, hearing our story would be interested in, in repeating them it in their own um, country or their own context, is um, we were again perhaps a bit naive and silly in not seeking um, or developing a framework on how to measure or capture impact in a valid way or in a you know some data in that regard uh, and, and we regret we did not do that perhaps we didn't realize it's going to be so big and so successful because it would have been very interesting to gather data perhaps before and after a an an outreach exercise before and after you know engaging the motivation the awareness before we contacted the stakeholder and after you know um, our work with the stakeholders we were silly enough not to engage you know and commit or include some data collection exercise in our activity and with hindsight we should have and that is why i'm saying I, it's a piece of advice that i would um like share with you or be happy to give to our to to whoever is coming, is wanting to do, repeat what we did in their own country, is to maybe not, maybe not, not, not overkill it by saying, uh, you know, set off a, a research project around you know, your initiative, but some data collection would have been interesting and it would have been um, welcome, I think, on many, on, in, on many counts, but we didn't do it, and I hope the lessons we learned will, 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 will be will not be, you know, will be, will be taken advantage by uh, countries who will repeat what we have tried to do in our own country or in our context. Uh, as, as an end note, I, uh, I would like to thank obviously the nurse, the nurse climate challenge for inspiring us and more so for supporting us which we would have not managed had we had we not found the resource to take us through our journey passion and interest and commitment alone would have not uh, made up for where it would not, not made up adequately or suffice the, the gap in the confidence and in the expertise which we were experiencing. Um, so w our passion, our interest, our commitment twinned or accompanied by or complemented by the, the confidence and the expertise that um, the resources which we were provided with um, took us through made it a success and I'm grateful for that. I really hope that our experience and sharing this experience will serve as an opportunity for uh, other countries to join the climate, the Nurses Climate Challenge now that it's being officially launched in Europe. We were like the uh, regular, the, the non-legitimate partners from Europe and it's it's nice that from now on, um, Europe is European partners are going to be formally recognized um, through the launch that's going to happen of the climate challenge in, in the European context. I I wish everybody well in this regard, and thank you for the opportunity once again. I'll pass on back to the chair now. Great, thank you very much, Maria. Um, and I think that kind of sums up quite nicely what the challenge is all about um, in, in terms of educating and creating that 
natural kind of growth, if you like, and that, that natural ability to share. Um, and I'm sure Shanda will agree that uh, you are always legitimate. <laughs> yeah, so there's no concerns there. Um, so I will very quickly just introduce our last speaker. Um, so Flora Cabello is a president of the Filipino Nurses Association in the Nordic region. He's a current lecturer at the Yavaskila University of Applied Sciences. Floro, please correct me if I got that wrong uh, in terms of pronunciation. Um, he's also a qualified registered nurse in Finland, Sweden, Iceland and the Philippines with experience in acute care and rehabilitation nursing uh, and infectious disease nursing. He is a Doctoral of Health Sciences candidate at the University of Eastern Finland and an active advocate on the rights of youth and internationally educated nurses. A climate advocacy among foreign nurses has been one of his primary roles of his organisation since its establishment. So, Floro, if you're ready, you can... Yes. ...share your screen. I'll stop sharing mine. And it's over to you. Yeah, thank you, Scott, for the introduction. And if Maria was able to educate 5,000 healthcare professionals, we were able to plant 5,000 trees, which is at least action-based from the Filipino internationally educated nurses who are living here in the Nordic region. So good afternoon, everyone from the land of thousand lakes and forest, Finland. It is quite snowy actually now here in the country. I can just feel the winter wonderland season much better than too much darkness, I guess. So uh, this afternoon, I'm going to present on the actions that we have done as Filipino internationally educated nurses who have been living in the Nordic region in order to uh, help achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 13, which is to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts as a small nonprofit uh, professional organization in the Nordic countries. So I am Flora Cabello, the president of the Filipino Internationally Educated Nurses Association in the Nordic region, and also a, a doctoral of health sciences in nursing science major at the University of Eastern Finland. So, and a lecturer at the Uvascula University of, of Applied Sciences. And we have, I think, a collaboration with the University of Malta uh, uh, from, from where Maria is actually working as a senior lecturer. So this is the official logo of the Filipino Nurses Association in the Nordic region. As you can see in the picture, it, it tries to cajole the, uh, that Filipino nurses try to provide the best quality and healing care to the people in, in the Nordic countries. So our organization uh, is the first nonprofit uh, inter-regional inter Filipino nursing organization in the Nordic countries, comprising of Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Faroe Islands, Orleans, and Greenland. So this was established uh, via social media platform last uh, October 1, 2018, as part of the results of my master's research in understanding the challenges of the Filipino nurses uh, before transition and during the integration period in the Finnish social and healthcare systems. And then afterwards, I have collaborated with other Nordic countries and found out common challenges and differences and similarities with systems. So based on the data that we have gathered from uh, different health authorities in the Nordic countries, there are approximately 10,000 Filipino nurses living in the Nordic region with or without license to work as registered nurses. So some are actually doing nursing assistant jobs, practical nursing and or working in other fields outside the nursing profession. So the pathway is very challenging due to the complicated systems in the qualification and credentialing system or process for nurses educated outside the EU or EEA countries. So as an organization, uh, we aim for uh, bilateral labor agreements between the Philippines and the Nordic countries because it is necessary to help ease the transition of these nurses. But, but that is another topic to be discussed in another part. So, as I mentioned, since the uh, establishment of the association, we have been uh, very committed to uh, uh, taking, taking part in our little, own little way in, in the radical achievement, uh, I mean, uh, of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 13, 
which is doing an immediate action to combat climate change that is uh, also sustainable or uh, has long-term benefits in, for, for the future generations. So while I was reading an article in one of the journals, I saw a healthcare without harm being cited as a source. And I was uh, very curious as it is healthcare with an advocacy of uh, doing no harm. So if we connect that to the professional ethics in nursing, that is equivalent to non-maleficence or doing no harm to patients. So at this time, we are doing no harm for the planet or for Mother Earth. So when I was uh, led to the organization's website, I immediately contacted Healthcare Without Harm Europe if, if, if you know, what means we can do for a collaboration as a, a nonprofit organization. So as we have been uh, building the organization together with my other colleague uh, nurses in the Nordic countries, I have... Um, uh, realized that um, we are one of the largest contributors of carbon dioxide emission as we have long haul flights to the Philippines. So as a president of the association, I was very concerned of the, of the, on the constant floods, storms and earthquakes in, in a global perspective as they are becoming worst uh, and worst each year. So especially the Philippines is in, in you know, in, in the Pacific ring of fires. So we are like the catch basin of uh, disasters and calamities in Southeast Asia. So as uh, I said, we have to do something, even though we are only a small organization, something that we can contribute and would help save the, the future generation. So plant a tree when you go home campaign emerged as our action-based intervention or our pledge to help uh, save our planet from the worsening and drastic effects of uh, climate change. So uh, yes, it may sound so easy, or it is easy to say that it is just an easy job, but uh, actually hard to implement because it involves uh, several, fact, uh, several sectors in the society, including the local government units, uh, departments of environment, and other uh, nonprofit organizations to make this campaign happen. So uh, the world knows about this, even our colleagues uh, from the United States of America and, and from Malta as well, that Philippines is the largest exporter of uh, Filipino nurses. And th that leads to the concept why we are the largest contributor also of carbon dioxide emissions. So Filipino nurses go on for holidays to the Philippines or other parts of the world to travel by uh, air transportation. So we produce a lot of uh, carbon dioxide by principle. So example, uh, flying from Manila to uh, Helsinki and back and forth or generates 1,647 1, kilograms of carbon dioxide. So there are 72 countries where an average person contributes less carbon dioxide emissions than that here. That's quite alarming actually. So if a person plants a uh, baby tree it absorbs uh, 5.9 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year, while a 10-year-old uh, tree absorbed, absorbs 20, 22 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year. So that means that, that for a uh, two-way flight or back and forth, uh, a person should uh, plant around 280 baby trees to compensate for the carbon dioxide emission produced. That is a huge task. So that is why it sounds easy, but very challenging to actually do in action to, to perform. So we have already uh, planted almost um, 5,000 trees, both in Finland and in the Philippines, and we wanted to double it, but you know, uh, Corona uh, came, so we have to think and replan our strategies in the next few months. So our goal though, is to plant uh, uh, 30,000 trees by uh, 2023 as an organization itself. So together with my colleagues and other, uh, I mean, uh, volunteer, volunteer staff or, or other organizations. So we are planning to contact uh, local municipalities in the Philippines soon to make a pledge or commitment to plan, uh, plant uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of trees if, if they are strongly committed to, to save uh, the planet Earth. So since we have, we were, we were con con contract, contacted by by one organization to take part in the integration role of Filipino nurses once they arrive to Finland. 
I encourage the recruitment agencies to oblige Filipino nurses to plant a lot of trees before they migrate to the Nordic countries. Since I just heard a news recently here in Finland that the country is going to recruit uh, over 1,000 nurses in the next four years. So if one each Filipino nurse hire, hired to work to, to Finland or other Nordic countries plants 280 baby trees, that already can make a difference in the future. For, so for the past uh, two months as well, uh, the Philippines has been hit by two consecutive floods. And you know about that as well. You have heard that in, in the news and in media outlets. So the recent one in November was considered as this year's worst storm ever recorded, leaving people homeless and many died. So we are actually killing uh, the next generation slow by slow, slowly. So what is the message uh, with this uh, campaign of a very small organization like us. So nurses are the untapped healthcare professionals to address the issue of climate change. Knowing that uh, each year we are trusted healthcare professional, the stakeholders, policy decision ma makers should recognize our importance in the healthcare system. Our role as nurses are not limited to the clinical care aspect in the society, but we also play an essential role in the field of research, advocacy, and uh, also uh, academic policies to encounter the health consequences of climate change. So uh, uh, Leffers and Butterfield in 2018, for example, discussed the, uh, uh, from the American Academy of Nursing Policy, I mean, the role of nurses in responding to the health consequences of uh, climate change. So this include upstream policies and downstream policies. So upstream policies uh, focus on assuring the best possible outcomes for the health of the future generation. So specific upstream recommendations addressing the, uh, to address the, re the pollution in reducing the pollution, building resilient communities and increasing the public's understanding of the connection between their health and uh, climate, uh, climate health. So, we address the root cause of the problem, so we prevent the problem from happening again. For example, we are wondering why is that uh, every time a disaster or a typhoon or flood in the Philippines, the impact is always gruesome. So understanding the phenomenon, the gravity of its impact is so high uh, because there are less trees in the Philippines uh, already because caused by massive uh, deforestation of the watershed areas which regulate the release of rainwater from hills and mountains. And also there are less uh, trees in the community areas to increase the absorption capacity of the ground. So what we can do to prevent this from further happening, aside from, the improve, aside from improving the dam or the Magat Dam, which serves as the uh, catch basin, we also need to uh, improve the ground level in the communities by planting more trees. So the Department of Health in the Philippines always deploys community health nurses to reach far-flung areas and the vulnerable groups of the society to address the healthcare needs of the, the people in, that commu in those communities. So these nurses can move and organize tree planting activities and explain the imp importance of uh, tree planting in the society. So. Uh, I can also remember while I was working two years ago, ago in one summer at the health uh, district hospital here in Uvascula, uh, we had uh, full admissions of patients because of the effects of uh, heat waves causing uh, heat exhaustion to elderly patients. So uh, this has uh, clearly exacerbated the effects of respiratory and neurological disorders like uh, example, asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases or COPD and also uh, cerebrovascular accident or stroke. So nurses were not prepared like me when I was taking care of those patients with the, with the high admission rates of these patients. So if you have a critical nursing shortage in the country and you have full house admission of fragile patients, nurses also get burnt out and decide to quit the nursing profession. So we don't want this because it affects the healthcare system, leading to poor quality of care to this group of patients, which are the vulnerable groups of, in the society, the, the elderly groups. So 
uh, there was a, a 50 percent of nurses, for example, here in Finland, in one survey conducted by the Finnish Nurses Association, or uh, the, they call it in Finnish, uh, expressed of uh, leaving the nursing profession. So this is very alarming, knowing Finland has a very good education and healthcare system. This is uh, something that we need to attend for a, a round, round a table discussion. So nurses blame themselves because they cannot provide the best of care to these patients. So this leads to the aspect of downstream policies which focus uh, climate adaptation, a disaster response, and the importance of preparing the nursing workforce to address the health consequences of climate change. So we need to prepare nurses and nursing students to the importance of tackling climate change in, in the society. And uh, because we are uh, the trusted uh, conveyors of message in the healthcare and uh, during response to uh, the disaster. So we are there 24 seven with the patients understanding their needs and also we make a uh, personalized uh, centered care approach uh, care with them and nurses when employed need to understand uh, biohazards, waste management, and also where to dispose expired and unused medications to the right bean. So we also use a lot of uh, single disposable materials like syringes, personal protective equipment, and garbage bags daily. So although we are uh, aware of the impacts of single disposable materials to the planet. It is the organization's responsibility to ensure that materials that we use are recycled properly and we are, uh, and they are environment friendly. So when it reaches our hand, nurses have no choice but to utilize these materials. So what is our suggestion? We suggest to the universities and universities of applied sciences here in Europe and even in Southeast Asia and other uh, uh, countries or all over the world who, or anyone who is a uh, partner of this uh, audience, uh, especially to incorporate the topics of climate change in the nursing curriculum. So it is, for example, here in Europe, it is up to the legislators in Europe whether they want to amend the European Union Directive 55 to include climate change or nursing schools or universities can include climate change in the health promotion course like uh, what I have already started in the University of Applied Sciences uh, where I am teaching to the, the first year international nursing students. So example, I have invited one uh, associate professor in the, from the United States to give a talk about the role of nurses in climate change. So this makes students uh, student nurses from the very beginning already aware on its impact to health, their workload, and when they encounter patients in acute care setup. So uh, we should also educate students, student nurses, on how to respond uh, to disasters even here in Europe, or we can share best practices and research like what Maria said and academic works between Europe and Asia and other parts of the world on the best ways to address climate change. And, and this can be challenging, though, if educators are not given resources to make this happen. I know Maria can relate to that sometimes. So although the, it is a matter of uh, negotiation at the end, we also need to uh, educate more nurses and encourage the younger generation to study nursing, to address the critical shortage of nursing, which, is, which makes it very challenging to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Universal Health Coverage. And in this case, we want to achieve the, the uh, SDG number 13. Yes, so I think uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, Scott, I'm Great. bringing it back to you. Yes, thank you very much. For Yes. Um, and again, thank you very much for another really interesting presentation and great to see what's, what's happening within your own organisation, with your own country uh, for that at the moment. Um, I'm just very conscious of the time we are over running. I, I do have just a couple more slides which I would like to pop up on the screen and then I, I'm going to jam in a couple of questions uh, as best as I can and hopefully my uh, panellists can, can stay with me for now. Um, so... 
Yeah. So, I mean, the whole point of this is that the the nurses' climate challenge is coming to Europe. Um, so it is a, a extremely successful initiative that currently exists in the US. Uh, the US version of it does have European and other participants attached to that. Um, but somebody, I think it was Maria, uh, had touched on the fact that currently everything within the, the Climate Challenge website is geared towards the US market. Um, so all of the support materials that are provided um, are entirely in English and they are uh, geared towards uh, kind of US based nurses. So where are we at the moment? Um, so in Europe, we will be launching the Nurses Climate Challenge in January 2021. Uh, we are currently working on the infrastructure for that. So there will be a European website to come. Uh, we will be building up the resources that are on that. So essentially what we'll be launching in January is the, the, the initial resources, if you like, uh, for European nurses. Um, and as it grows, as it develops, we'll be looking to develop those resources into different languages, because, of course, being European, one of the biggest challenges that we're going to face is the various different languages that we've actually got across the continent. Um, so that's something that we will be building up as we go along. Uh, initially, resources will be in English, but we will be looking to convert them as soon as possible. Um, so, as I say, we're coming in January 2021. Essentially, this event is marking the, the kind of soft launch, if you like, of the, the, the European Nurses Climate Challenge. If you are a nurse or you have colleagues and friends that are nurses who have an interest in climate and, and are keen to take part, we do have a website set up at the moment. This is essentially a, a holding website where you can register your interest to join the Nurses Climate Challenge in January when it formally launches. Um, so you can provide us with your, your contact email address and we will keep you up to date on, the, the, on, on things as we go along. Uh, so January is obviously not very far away, um, but it will mean you will be the first to know when the, the site goes live and when you can register to join the challenge. So if that is something that interests you, if you would like to sign up to the challenge, but you'd like to be kept up to date in the meantime, um, the website to go to is EUR for Europe dot nurses climate challenge dot org and so that's eur dot nurses climate challenge dot org so if this does interest you then please do go to that website and register your interest and please feel free to share it with your nursing colleagues or your nursing friends who uh, will have an interest in doing this as well so that's essentially where we are i would like to just throw a couple of questions at least at my uh, panel members and hopefully people can stay with us just for maybe five minutes more. Um, there have been questions coming in and I'm just trying to find them. There we go. And yeah, I would like to kind of throw this open. There's none that are particularly geared towards any particular individual at the moment. So please do feel free to to jump in. Nice, short, punchy answers as possible, if, if, if possible. Um, so I will get started. So just really going in kind of an order of preference, really. Um, so this this has actually come up uh, in a couple of the questions. So uh, we've got Anne, who says she's interested to understand how best to support nurses' per uh, participation in non-violent direct action to raise awareness of the Im imminent threat to health as a result of climate change. Um, now, from a professional perspective, I think that can obviously cause conflict. Uh, but it would be interesting to understand whether um, you guys, uh, any of the panelists, have had experience of this and, and how that might best be approached, uh, particularly within the context of the Nurses' Climate Challenge. I can speak to that quickly, Scott. Um, so, uh, in the context of these resources, we have um, a couple related to policy specifically that encourage nurses to learn about um, basically local climate or energy or health policy in a way that connects to um, you know, their region specifically. It's really important to be aware of what local policy makers, um, you know, where their standing is in, in terms of a lot of this so that um, in the way of, of participating in some of that you know, nonviolent direct advocacy, you know the issues. 
Um, we have a lot of nurse climate champions who have gone to marches and demonstrations and written letters to the editor and, and address this in a more public fashion. Um, and I would say the number one thing to do is encourage nurses to speak from their experience, speak, include stories of personal understanding of how climate has impacted their patients or their family or their community and say, I, I've been a cardiac nurse for seven years at this hospital. Here's what I see. Here's the bill we can take action on. Legislator XYZ, here's what we as nurses are asking you to do and be very specific, short and sweet but keeping it directly related to the nursing practice and their experience from that angle. Great, thank you very much, Shanda. Yeah. Also um, here in Finland, we are uh, taught to, uh, to do nonviolent actions. Like uh, we, I, uh, if I can remember it right, one of the professors whom I've had discussed with and the best way to discuss with policy and decision makers is to present to them data and research, academic works, because that's how you can discuss properly with them without any violent actions. Great, thank you, Floro. Um, and I will ask one more question. Uh, so this is from Paulina. Uh, so do you think engagement depends on education and awareness or is there an inner well-being um, and privilege? And from what I understand of the question here, um, Paulina is kind of referring to things like uh, kind of working conditions, for example, um, and uh, I guess kind of um, terms and conditions and that kind of thing. So making sure that you've you've got a kind of healthy well-being in, in your workplace, that you're in a, in a good place for work, um, and where climate, I guess, may fall in terms of the prioritisation for particular staff members. Okay, I, I can answer that based on my experience, at least uh, this summer. Uh, uh, it was quite hot here in Finland. So it, uh, we were very uncomfortable as registered nurses to work with patients because the air conditions are not working properly. So the, the employers uh, had to make some guidelines for us, like uh, you, need, you need to go for a break every 10 minutes when the temperature is over 37 degrees uh, Celsius or 38 degrees Celsius. So you have to go for a break every 30 minutes. So it's a matter of policy, I think, and the way how how the organ organization itself handles or takes good care of the employees themselves. I think this is based from my experience. Absolutely, thank you, Flora. Mm -hmm. And one just nugget to add, and especially in the you know era of COVID-19, that is top priority, keeping patients safe um, and, and keeping staff safe. And so I think it's relevant to be knowledgeable about how to make that connection between COVID-19 or you know, whatever else is the highest priority situation at the time, and then this issue. So how does COVID relate to climate? How does COVID relate to sustainability? You can bring in um, personal protective equipment and waste generated in hospitals. You can bring up how individuals within communities with higher levels of air pollution are more likely to get COVID in the first place and are more likely to do more poorly in places with high levels of air pollution, for instance. So more resilient communities lead to healthier patients um, and healthier people, but it's, it's drawing those links um, because there will always be competing priorities that's the nature of the complex system that we're in. Great, thank you, Shanda. And Maria, I don't know if you've got any final thoughts to add on that? Yes, perhaps from our experience, I think in order to keep people engaged, nurses engaged, the, the more the emphasis also is on the patients rather than themselves, it's the message, the message is more likely to have an impact. Um, I say this, I mean, it's, it's quite sad, but perhaps nurses, worldwide are quite used to and accustomed to perhaps non-optimal environments and conditions and working working contexts and therefore could put up with a lot and therefore it's very hard to to empower them and motivate them beyond um, what is really essential but on the other hand nurses are very much associated with with immense dedication towards their patients and do, do the well-being of their patients. So if talking about climate change and the impact it had on their patients, we I'm inclined to believe had 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 a bigger impact than we, than 
talking to them, they are talking to nurses about how climate change is impacting them as individuals or professionals. Because the patients remain first, even in this in this regards, and that's the beauty of being a nurse, I guess. Great, thank you very much, Maria. Um, okay, so I mean, we're obviously over time, so I'm going to stop there with the questions. Um, there are for my for my speakers if you do have a spare 10 minutes there are more questions on the hoover platform so please do feel free to go in and maybe give some written responses to people um, i'm sure our, our attendees would be very grateful for that um, i'm going to thank you all so thank you to maria thank you to shanda and thank you to floro uh, and thank you also to everybody who has attended particularly those who have stuck out right to the end um, and please do uh, register your interest uh, on the, the, the nurses, the European Nurses Climate Challenge website. The web address is now dropped into the uh, chat function on Whova. It is a hyperlink, so it is really easy just to follow it through and register your interest. Um, so with that, I'm going to close out. Thank you again to everybody, uh, speakers, attendees, and please, those that are uh, interested, please do keep an eye on uh, the, the, the coming launch for the Nurses Climate Challenge. So thank you again and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care.